Okay, great. So in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the October 18th, 2023 meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of the committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Ms. Zeminski. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Ms. Dominowski? Here. Thank you. Ms. Faya, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. Tantliff? Present. Ms. Bawinde Unajala? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vea. Mr. Hartlove, Ms. Unawala, and Ms. did I say that hardly wrong? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Onijala. <laughs> Onijala. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Tatloff, will you please can't look, will you will you provide an overview of the budget 101 website? Sure. Um, I'm going to um, introduce um, our executive director of communications, Ms. Boyende Onijala, um, to go over the uh, the Budget 101 website that we're very excited about and just rolled out recently. She put a lot of work into this. It was also quite a bit of work on uh, Mr. Tantliff's part in getting a lot of the supporting schedules together, so he's here to answer any uh, budget specific questions about that information. But with that, I turn it over to Ms. Onijala. Thank you so much, Mr. Hartlove, and good evening, members of the board. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to share some information about our new Budget 101 website. As Mr. Hartlove um, shared, this truly was a joint effort between the communications team and Mr. Hartlove's team um, in coming together with the numbers, with the graphics, the design. And so we're really proud of this website uh, because truly it speaks to the commitment on behalf of our superintendent to engage all members of team BCPS. And uh, as you know, as she shared multiple times, this she really wants the budget process to be different and that we are actively engaging the community, soliciting their feedback, hearing their thoughts and ideas on the investments that they believe the school system should make, on what's working, what's not working, how we can improve the process. And so really what you see here before you is a reflection of that commitment is a reflection of that um, uh, desire to bring more members of the team BCPS community um, as part of this process. And so we're starting earlier than we typically do. And um, as part of this uh, effort to engage with the community, we're having five community conversations with the superintendent. Last night, we were at Pikesville High School. Uh, last week, we were at Sparrows Point High School. We have three more to go. So we encourage anyone who's watching who has not yet made it out to one of our meetings to please join us at one of the three upcoming meetings. And so in addition to those community conversations, we have this Budget 101 website. So starting at the very top, you will see a video um, produced by BCPS TV that really digs into the numbers where does the money come from? What are our expenditures? Um, how do we allocate resources? breaks it down even to the dollar, <laughs> how we allocate our funding because, you know, people hear $2.8 billion and they say that is a lot of money. And so I want to encourage everyone who's watching, those who are listening to take a look at this video because you'll learn quite a bit about what we do with the funds as it comes in, where it comes from. Um, many thanks to our, our, our county government partners, being that the vast majority of our, our funds come from the county government um, and really how we look 
look at the bigger picture to then allocate those resources to school. So as you're as um, they're scrolling, you can see here we have a section about what drives the BCPS budget. And our superintendent has made our four priority areas very clear academic achievement, infrastructure, safety and climate, highly effective teachers, leaders and staff. And so as we come together around this fiscal year 2025 budget, these are the four areas that are guiding our work, guiding the conversations, guiding the investments, the proposed investments. And so as the community comes um, to join us at our meetings or to testify at public hearings or to engage in the county council's um, hearings, uh, our desire is that everyone is keeping these four priority areas at the forefront, understanding that everything that we do is being driven by this, by these four areas. Um, and then of course, our enrollment and the growth needs of the system, things that we've discussed many times. So as we have more students receiving uh, more services from us, whether it's free and reduced price meals, uh, the number of students receiving special education uh, services, and the number of English language learners that we have in our school system, that has a significant impact on the budget. So you also see here enrollment, uh, which is the, of course a driving factor for the funds that come into us um, uh, from the state, the come into us from the county. And so you see the enrollment trends here projected from fiscal year 2024 through FY 2033. Um, and so we hope this information is informative to the community as they're looking at the numbers, right? As we grow, as enrollment stays flat, what does that mean? What impact does it have on the budget? Um, if you could scroll down, please. In the next section, you'll see here again what I spoke to earlier, where the, does the money come from? Uh, us wanting the community to understand that our elected officials make a strong investment and commitment in team BCPS students. And we know that everyone wants to see a return on that investment. So 48% of our funding comes from Baltimore County. Um, as you see here, 30, nearly 38% from the state and then nearly 14 from federal and other sources. Um, if you could scroll down, please. And then we talk about the partnership between local, state, federal and other. So again, our community can understand that there are different sources, there are different uh, funding sources and, and, and areas where the money is coming in from. You can keep scrolling, please. Next up, everyone wants to know where does the money go? So we have before you here um, uh, two charts, one that breaks down our workforce made of professional uh, staff and our support staff, and then where uh, the funds go, truly to the vast majority being to salary and wages. And as I talked about our video um, that kind of opens up the website, it talks about um, how uh, the vast majority of every dollar goes to the school. And that goes to supporting teacher salaries, that goes to the instructional materials. And so again, what we want the community to take away from this is that, you know, the perception or, you know, any confusion that may be out there that, oh, the, most of the money is going here or it's not going directly to the school. We hope that as people see it right here in front of them on the website, they can see that breakdown and know that the, the funds are truly going where they're supposed to be. And that is to the schoolhouse and to support the incredible educators, administrators, and support staff uh, that keep our schoolhouses running. Keep scrolling, please. How are resources allocated to schools? Again, I spoke to programs, I spoke to need, I spoke to enrollment. So we just try to, in very simple terms, explain how we're allocating staffing, um, how we also differentiate funds that go to schools based on the need. So do they have more students receiving special education services, more English language learners? Uh, so then that you know changes the way uh, some schools would then receive that additional funding. And then of course, programs as our super Superintendent has been talking about magnet programs and other, you know, CTE programs and unique programs to specific schools. That also has an impact on um, the funding that is allocated to schools. So keep scrolling. Here, as our superintendent has been speaking to at our community uh, meetings, what we really wanted to provide was some historical data from FY 2018 through to this current fiscal year, um, the staffing right how how are we allocating staffing 
who, where, where we, you know, where do we see the most number of uh, uh, positions going? And of course, you can see here general education teachers and uh, other school uh, based staff. And then, you know, for those who've had questions about, uh, well, central office and the leadership, executive leadership, what does that number look like? You can see here over the years how that number has changed. And um, we hope that folks can see, again, being tra very transparent as to the position types that we have and what that is looked like over the last several years, uh, we hope that folks have a better understanding, that our community has a better understanding of what that looks like in Baltimore County Public Schools. Keep scrolling. And then, of course, the budget cycle from planning to budgeting to allocating, staffing, and then, of course, monitoring. And the monitoring, again, is all tied to those priority areas, ensuring that we're taking a hard look at those programs, at the data, to be able to speak to whether it's meeting its intended outcomes, its intended goals, and having those conversations as a community, which is why, again, we're encouraging folks to come out to the community conversations, because if there are currently some investments, programs that we have that you believe are not helping move us forward in the right direction, that are not helping uh, to address student achievement, we want to hear your thoughts on where you think we should redirect some of those investments in that funding. So we really wanted to make it very clear that this is the cycle. We're starting earlier because we want more feedback. Uh, our, our community had an opportunity to complete a survey um, in addition to these community conversations where they could write out what their thoughts were, select what they think the top priority should be for the district. So as we're in this planning stage leading up to uh, the presentation by the superintendent to the board in January, uh, we want want our community to know there's still plenty of time for you to get involved and to share your thoughts with us. Let's scroll down. And then this section really just speaks to who we are collaborating with to build this budget. Um, every member of team BCPS is a, a vital stakeholder, is an important part of that puzzle. And we want our community to understand that they have a voice in this process uh, where there's been, you know, uh, not as many opportunities to be engaged and to share your thoughts. We're writing it clearly here that our staff, our families and stakeholders, our county leaders, and of course the Board of Education are important partners in creating a spending plan for BCPS that reflects our core values and priorities. Next section, please. And then, of course, the timeline where we are now, as I, as I shared in the planning development stage. And so this timeline really just outlines in a really clear uh, graphic where we are in the process, how long this process takes, the different components of the process. So as it moves from the superintendent to the board and then the board submitting um, their uh, uh, request to county government, when we hear back from county government, and then, of course, when the funds become available for spending. Next section, please. And then lastly, again, I don't think we can say it enough. We want Team BCPS to be involved in this process, to join us at the community conversations, um, to, to show up when it's time for the Board of Education hearings, to you know, submit written testimony, make your voice heard. Again, this budget is about our students, it's about our staff, and who better to speak to it than those who are directly impacted by this work. So there have been many ways, and you know, as I shared, there was a survey that was open for more than two weeks where we've completed two of the five community conversations. So three more opportunities for you to come and join us, uh, working with our area education advisory councils. They have meetings on the operating budget. So if you prefer to attend your Southwest area meeting, you can do so and, and talk about the things impacting your area. And then testifying, as I mentioned, at the Board of Education operating budget hearings and testifying before the Baltimore County um, council. So there are many ways to get involved and learn about how BCPS um, does what it does to invest in students and to move student achievement 
forward and to ensure that we are recruiting, retaining uh, the most highly qualified staff and of course um, just supporting our schools. So that is the Budget 101 website. Again, many thanks to the budget team, um, Mr. Hartlove, Mr. Tentliff, and all who have provided the resources that we use to kind of build this site. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have on this website, but this truly is just a starting point, uh, a central repository, if you'd have, um, of resources and information uh, for the Team BCPS community. So happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for um, that presentation. I was, it's a lot of work in there and I appreciate everyone's efforts. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm really excited about this and at the transparency it gives our um, constituents. I, will, um, I won't start. Does anybody want to have any questions? I have a question. OK. And so first, I just want to thank um, the entire team BCPS for developing this website, this budget 101. It's to me the first step towards more improved budget transparency. It's very clear, you know, even when looking at that screen with the, the positions and, you know, how many have been added, subtracted. Um, to show where the priorities are um, when it comes to, to hiring. So I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the sessions that are happening to involve the community. I know I had the opportunity to go to the one in Sparrows Point, and that was just wonderful. Um, so could you just speak a little bit about like the, you know, what's the next step for this? So you have the budget 101, like what is the grand vision? of where um, you want to take this budget transparency because it's definitely off to a great start. So I see Mr. Hartloff has um, popped on screen, but I'll speak from a communication mm -hmm. standpoint and then turn it over to him as, as it relates to the numbers. But for us as a communications team, we're all about getting information out there, right? Because we hear a lot that people have no idea how it all happens, when it happens, what happens and why. And so, as you said, this is truly the first step. We want to build on it. So part of that will be as we're getting some of the questions at these sessions, we're adding a section to the website where you can see the questions that have been submitted, right? We're also looking at multi-year kind of conversations. So this, it's not going to be one and done, these five conversations. The superintendent has said that as well, that this is just to start, to get us started, to help, help people have a feel for what we mean when we say community engagement and two-way engagement, because we're not just going to people and lecturing them. We're giving a very short presentation and then we're saying give us feedback, share your thoughts with us. So you can expect to see that the website will grow as we get more information. We see the themes about the question of the questions that um, the community is asking or staff are asking. So we'll be adding on to that website. The survey was another effort that was also available in multiple languages. We want to continue our social media engagement. Um, but beyond that, I know that my colleagues are also uh, taking this information out to some of the community advocacy groups. I shared a lot with the board in previous meetings about our engagement with the Spanish speaking community. So as we go and have you know, these sessions on how can we best serve you? How can we meet your needs? Where are the communication gaps? We're letting them know, hey, did you know that we've launched a new budget website? Did you know that you could share your thoughts by completing the survey or come to one of the community meetings. So we're trying to get as far and wide out into the community and to continue to build upon uh, the website. And so that in many years to come, people can get used to the fact that, OK, it's budget season. That means multiple engagement opportunities. That means that I'm going to have an opportunity to engage directly even with the superintendent. And so we hope that people see that increased engagement from us as a communications team. But Mr. Hartlove, certainly if you want to speak to any of the other budget and number efforts, please go ahead. No, and I don't want to I don't want to take any of your, your your time, but I did want to throw out there that um, you know the superintendent early in this process wanted to bring communications in because our our folks are numbers people. You know, we know how to do the budget, we know how to put the budget together. We're not experts. We want to be transparent and we want to talk to the community, but we're not experts on how to do it, how to best do it. 
Um, you wouldn't want to see the uh, website if we put it together. It would just be a, <laughs> it would just be a bunch of numbers, and um, nobody would uh, be able to understand it. So, um, we it, the superintendent really felt strongly about getting some uh, communication aspect um, to it. And I was just going to put a plug in for the uh, the community conversations. You know, anybody who's listening out in the public, it is your chance to get. Um, you know, they're they're small groups. You get to be very close to the superintendent. You can talk directly to the superintendent. There are board members um, that attend, so you there are board members that you can speak with. There are members of this uh, superintendent's uh, cabinet there to answer questions. Um, so you can really get firsthand input right there. It's you know kind of different than sending an email or you know where you don't know what happens with it. And we take all that very seriously. But this you can actually see. You know, you can see the person reacting to your actual suggestion as you make it, which is good. I mean, that's a good, good feeling when you you kind of know that it was received. So yes, absolutely. And Ms. Booker Dwyer, if I could add one more thing, because we're talking also a lot about um, external engagement. I do want to acknowledge and share that the superintendent has been engaging internally as well, meeting with small groups of uh, central office based staff to give them an opportunity to share and to understand what the process looks like, what the challenges are that lay ahead of us as we enter this budget season. So managers, directors, Groups of people have come together uh, to have, you know, FaceTime with the superintendent to share their concerns, to ask questions. And so there's an internal and external component. Um, and again, I think that just speaks to our superintendent's commitment uh, to engaging all members of Team BCPS staff, families, students. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. OK, thank you. And my question, I mean, you've already answered it. it, was just how are those? I'm I'm signed up to go to one of them. I can't remember which date, but I just wanted to get your input about how those small meetings were going, taking the superintendent out, talking about the website, if they have given you additional information, any like anything else they wanted to see on the website. Um, and if you'll be putting like those comments up for, I think you did say that you would be. So yes. So you've answered all my questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you. OK, coming up next date. Um, next, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Hartlove will review the Q1 BLT report. Uh, thank you, and I just want to uh, introduce Mr. Tantleff. He's our director of, of budget. Uh, this is something that we have been doing annually. Um, it is uh, it is a core um, thing, a core uh, report that is reviewed uh, uh, by the uh, budget committee. Uh, Mr. Tantleff is sharing his screen, and I will turn it over to uh, Whit. Thanks. Um, yeah, so we've been doing this about two years. Uh, it had been requested and then it was also noted as a deficiency when the efficiency study was published. Um, and just as a review for everyone, this shows um, what's called the budget line transfer, specifically when we go from one activity to another. The sum of all these, so we'll review them with you after Q1, two and an abbreviated Q3 because that will lead to our bat and uh, we'll do a refresher with you before we get to the bat at the board meeting um, just to uh, get everyone on the same page but in theory uh, you know we used not in theory but the board used to be concerned that they were seeing all this for the first time when the bat was presented and the bat uh, just moves money between activities we don't go over budget and we stay within our budget, but there's no way to keep everything to know exactly how we're going to spend before the year starts. So uh, this supports that also. Um, and so I'm going to go through it now. And these were different offices that uh, submit these changes just to move dollars from activity one activity to another. And the balance you can see is always zero. So I'm not going to go through these because it's really big. Q1 is always the biggest. Because we push out a lot of dollars. 
uh, to start the year. So this this uh, report's actually a couple thousand, there's over a thousand lines. So I'm just going to flip through it, uh, to give you the idea, and um, we'll take it from there. Um, so you can see there's small ones. These are just an office. Uh, you know, up here needs to move money from point A to point uh, B. Um, this was actually just uh, an adjustment. Um, some of the offices have to push money out. Here's uh, just Red House run elementary startups, just pushing the money to where it needs to be spent. We have it all in one place. You can see this is a good example, 95,000. Um, but then uh, once the year begins, we can push the dollars out to where the school needs it hey, from activities. Wait, yeah. Wait, sorry to interrupt. Go back up to that. Just I think, you know, and, and some of this is timing uh, related. So I and, and correct me if I'm wrong, we, but when we put the budget together, we kind of take a best uh, stab at where the school is going to need it. But then later after our, our process is so the school knows they're getting, in this case, they know they're getting 95,000. Then the school has actually told us where they want to put the money. Is that correct, uh, Whit, Mr. Tantliff? Uh Yes, yes, yes. So, so we, basically, we'll move yeah, it, it, they need it. Yeah, so this is just because they're, because they, they, obviously, as they get closer to the school year, they know better of how they want to use their dollars. That's basically what we're doing. Instead of having them lock in nine months before the fiscal year starts, they have more more time to get this together and now they're putting it exactly where they want it. Um, uh, you're going to see a lot of lines of magnet. So all of the per pupil money that the magnet programs get across the system uh, starts central and then the magnet office collects and approves budgets from each magnet program and then we push those dollars out to the schools uh, once we roll over into the new year. And uh, this is a unique, what we call appropriation. So magnet funds aren't commingled with uh, the school's base per pupil funds, for instance. So you can see this is just uh, taking it from whole back and pushing it out to the different schools in accordance with their budget. Uh, you can see it goes on for a long way. <clears throat> uh, this is interesting. This was, if you remember, uh, at the la 11th hour, the county council decided to cut our budget by a half million willy-nilly. So we had no choice but to uh, shave a little bit off of all of the central office budgets. So there was no time to plan, no time to try to figure out if there was something more, um, I would just say, intelligent we could do. So our only choice here was just to uh, do across the board cuts to all the central office, basically. Now, some items like built-ins, uh, things that we know can't be cut, we avoided. But all of the, you know, generally variable budgets, we just went and uh, cut across the board. So within each office, there's a number of account strings. That's why you have a number of reductions within the same office. It's just because we're cutting the different lines in their budgets. So you can see, you know, this was a little present we got to start the year off. Um, uh, here's just offices moving. Um, uh, this was uh, the CAO had to move uh, about a million dollars to support prof professional development for the new curriculum that was approved by the board and the council in the budget. So this was to provide professional development so the teachers could effectively implement the new um, uh, CNI cur or new uh, literacy curriculum. Um, this is oh, just training, moving their dollars around. Um, this uh, is the Kelly Services contract right here. You can see some big numbers. 
Uh, now this is, uh, you saw a similar phenomena last year. So if you go back to 2022, subs were all salaried. Uh, you know, we paid all our subs directly. Uh, the board approved in 2000 FY23 for us to move to Kelly Services to outsource our substitutes. And uh, we did that. Then going towards the end of the budget, we were trying to make reductions. And so uh, going into the adopted budget, we switched the subs back to salaries from contractual. And then we decided to keep the contract because Kelly was able to reduce their costs. And so now uh, we're move, just moving money back into uh, contracted services. So this was just really a behind the scenes uh, because temporarily we thought we were going to get out of the Kelly contract, but then we decided uh, to stick with it once they reduced their cost. So uh, here's more magnet program changes. Here's the concentration of poverty grant um, as Michelle Stansberry and her team push those dollars out to the schools in accordance with the school budgets that were approved by the COP team. So it just again starts centrally and then we're just pushing the dollars out uh, in accordance with the blueprint legislation and the budgets that each school has set up. So you can see lots of it and COP is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, it's just uh, some realignments at the uh, Carroll Manor. So you, you kind of get the gist of it now. Um, here's more concentration of poverty. You can see there's a lot of lines. The, the report, for those of you seeing it for the first time, it gets smaller as the year goes on. But as you can see, we just have a lot of push out to begin the year of uh, items that we keep centrally and then uh, push out as the year begins. So, so uh, Mr. Tantliff, I yeah. think uh, this is another one where you can you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had kind of mentioned this earlier on how this was something that was rec a recommendation and so what you're seeing here is, is at, at the end of the year if you if you remember we did a bat which is very much summarized it's it's a, a few lines and the lines are large you know their dollar amounts are, are quite large and it shows you where we're moving money from um and where we're moving it to, it all nets to zero, but it, it's it's movement of dollars to make sure that we stay within our overall budget. The you know, so for transparency's sake, this is really showing all of the detail behind those big numbers that you see. So, but for those of you who like it summarized, you'll see it in the bat summarized. For those of you who really want to get down into the detail, you can look at all of these at your leisure, and. Um, you can see all the detail of specifically what is getting moved from from where to where. So it's a lot of detail, but it's for the folk, who, the person who wants to really drill in and really know all the details of what's going on. This is that detail. So it's very transparent. I mean, it's everything. So thank you. Um, so uh, bringing it home here. You know, there's blueprint. Uh, there's also offices are submitting. You can see lots of blueprint, just like lots of magnet. Um, and then here, uh, uh, IT did a realignment. So they uh, did some consolidation and moving uh, personnel and uh, activities between offices. So again, it nets to zero. It's all within DOIT. Um, and they just uh, realign to work a little more efficiency. Uh, here's workforce development blueprint again, pushing out to match actual expenses, um, more concentration of poverty. Uh, this is just an office moving expenses around. Uh, more of the do it reorg. 
uh, schools moving dollars. So a lot of it's mundane, some of it's to start off the year, but that's it in a nutshell. Um, obviously there's a lot, there's tons we could, there's, uh, could show you, but hopefully you get the gist of it. Happy to take any questions or we can move on to the next topic. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff, for that. Um, this was a lot, and I did um, I did go through it as much as I could. Um, and the only thing, I, I, and this is not really a question for you, it was just kind of going along with the um, Budget 101 website. This is a good way of, um, because we have the figures in it, to weigh like what we're spending and the outcomes we're getting as far as, you know, retaining and, um, and 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 um, recruiting teachers, um, student outcomes, um, how like how that because when we get to this fiscal you know cliff that we're we're headed towards, we're gonna have to make cuts, and it would be good to see down the line where this spending number wise, how this helped our students, how this helped our teachers, how this helped our schools, and um, so that. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, I would like to see us move towards, you know, a rating system or a metric system of like, this is what this did, this is what that did. Um, I don't know, I, I'm just, I'm kind of, some numbers throw me off as far as like a lot of the conferences and overnight stays and they're big numbers and, um, what are we getting out of that? What? How is this helping our students? How is this helping our teachers? How is this helping, you know, the outcomes with our kids and test scores? So I would like to see something. I would like to see the Budget 101 website work with this more detailed um, budget line transfers and an outcomes based um, met, um, metrics or matrix or that's my only um, comment on that one. But anyone else have questions? And Ms. Dominowski, just to follow yeah. up on what you're saying, that is part of it, at the at the uh, community conversations. The superintendent refers to um, the zero based budgeting that we're undertaking this year, and that's um, it, it. It would be hard to put all that detail out on our website, but we are going through. We are going through the exercise of go, uh, having everyone who puts a budget in going through the detail of what they're entering to specifically look for you know, and ask those questions, what are we getting for? I think your example is very good. You know, if we go to, if we t attend a professional development annually, uh, are are we getting the bang for the buck? Is it, is, are we getting good uh, information for our, our employees? You know, maybe we're sending 10 employees to the same professional development. Maybe we only need to send five and we can, and you know, we can either reduce that budget or send folks to a, another professional development that will be better. So we're we're trying to ask those questions this year as opposed to just putting the same budget in as last year and just doing the same thing that we've done. So we, we are trying to drill down to that level of detail this year. Um, it's extra work, but it's worth it's worth it to look for dollars that maybe aren't being spent as wisely as you as we would like. I appreciate that. Thank you. Did anybody have any other questions? Ms. Brooker Dreyer or Mr. McMillian? Been very quiet this evening. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> quiet kind of guy at times. Uh, I think that this whole zero base thing is going to be remarkable to watch because, you know, having been out in the school system as a teacher for 35 years, I saw a couple times at the end of the school year, the school had money left. And I've seen people go out and buy really, really nice office furniture with that money. Uh, so I'm just curious to see how this goes. And, and, you know, people need to justify rather than just continually to give them the same money and then they want more money. Let them justify what they need. I think that's a great idea and I'm, I'm all for it. Thank you. And I, I love the level of detail that this provides in the whole zero based budgeting approach that's about to happen. Um, my question is, how are you all proactively planning for unexpected cuts? Because we know the cuts, especially coming up now, we can ex 
expect that there will be more cuts. And I know that in this presentation you gave, when you got that unexpected cut from the local government, it was, okay, we're just going to slice across the board from central office. So as you forecast budgets in the future, how are you building, are you anticipating um, cuts and, and identifying, okay, if we get a 20% cut in our budget, then this is what will get cut. Um, are you all doing that or is it going to be that approach when the cut happens, then it's just an across the board cut? We are well th to get back to the cut that we we that, that uh, Mr. Tantliff was was referring to the we never want to be reduced by any amount of money in the grand scheme of things that wasn't a large amount of money um, and the timing was incredibly late in the process so those are the two reasons why we did that the way we the way we did that um, and it turned out to be. Uh, you, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Tantliff, but wasn't it around 4% of central office discretionary budgets? So something like yeah, that. Sure. Yeah. So so what that means is, is like in my office, we have, you know, a supply budget and we had the, so those would have gotten cut by 4%. So it ended up not being hugely impactful. And that was the reason we went about that that way. Larger cuts that have a you know that are you know the significant and we have time to kind of plan for them. The across the board is really not the best way to go because it treats every budget exactly the same, and we all know some budgets are much much more important than other budgets. You know, you we all have our home budget, and you know you have things like food in your budget. Well, obviously that's not one that you want to take a big hit on. If you were, you know, cutting your home budget, you probably would look at travel and you would probably look at, you know, things like that. Uh, you would, wouldn't look at, you know, your health care and things. Like, so that's what we're, we're trying to do. Um, we do anticipate, we, we, as part of the budget planning process, we do try to estimate what our revenues are going to be and we estimate what our expenses are going to be. And um, we are always looking at how we're going to fit this together. And usually that I've never been with an organization where we had more revenue than we needed. So we're almost always saying we don't have enough. And now we have to figure out how to prioritize and make reductions. So we are those we were already starting to have those conversations with the superintendent about, um, you know, She's prioritizing for her own budget what she wants to uh, uh, include and what she doesn't want to include. So those things are already happening. Um, and I, I have also learned that you don't want to talk too much about your reductions because funding agencies can hear that and say, OK, well, they're prepared for a, you know, $10 million cut. So we'll just cut them by 10 million because they're ready for it. So we try not to talk about it too much, but we are planning privately. We are planning for all scenario, all different scenarios. That is helpful. And then I noticed, so you in some areas with this, like you explicitly mentioned like the blueprint fund, so the concentration of poverty and then that's all career readiness. Um, are ESSER funds listed in this manner as well? Like, would, is there like a unit name for ESSER funds or is that somewhere else? Yes, ESSER, um, the one that's active now is ESSER 3, that is a grant. What we were just reviewing was the general fund and uh, the budget appropriation transfer and the BLTs uh, only apply to the general fund. Got it. Yep, that is helpful. That's sure. all my questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next, we have Mr. Tantliff and Mr. Hartliff again. Will you provide an overview of the student, how did I say it like that, student board member training? <clears throat> We, we talked about this at our last meeting. We have put together um, uh, our House Bill 0175 draft training um, for our student representative. It was developed uh, through um, kind of the, some of the discussion we had last time and then the uh, uh, the uh, the budget office and our uh, uh, fi uh, fi our facilities folks uh, put together a training. The facilities folks worked, uh, helped us on the capital budget training part or did quite a bit of that work. Uh, the budget office worked on the operating budget uh, um, part. 
And um, our goal is to uh, provide you with uh, this update on where we stand. At this point, we believe that this is what we would go forward with. Um, but we wanted to put it out there to get uh, feedback. You have it now. Um, I, I don't know if you had, you may have had it for a week or so, but you may not have had a lot of time to look at it. So uh, please uh, do take a look at it. If you have any uh, feedback for us, please let us know. We're, we're open to any kind of feedback and we'll, we'll incorporate that uh, in um, to the extent that we can. We are going to bring it to the uh, November uh, seventh board meeting, so the uh, board has a chance to, um, uh, the full board has a, a chance to um, uh, weigh in, and 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 then we need to actually train our our student, so she is prepared to participate in the budget in January. So we want to get this uh, approved, so we can um, get our student ready to go. So that's kind of the where we stand. Wanted to give you an update and give you a chance to um, to ask any questions. I don't like I said. I don't know how long you've had a chance to look at, or if you had a chance to look. At. I think it's been out for about a week or so. I'm going to give full disclosure. I saw 37 slides today and I did not go through all of them, <laughs> but I appreciate all the work that you you put into this for training our student board member. I think it's really important that. Um, they understand the full magnitude of, of voting on such a large amount of money that goes out to all students, all schools. Um, so, and I and I would like this to get passed soon so that she is prepared and and future you know student board members are prepared to make you know an educated vote to understand you know this is it's you know, we need to be in, all be involved, all ask questions. So um, I don't really have any questions other than how soon you know we'll be able to get her um, through the training and I guess it just depends on how quickly it gets passed. Yes and we we talked about two different ways I mean we we could we could really train her now and then take anything that's changed and go back and do a refresher but I think what we're going to do since we're on the uh, the November 7th uh, we will on November 8th we will uh, Try to set something like that we could set it up now for something right after the seventh meeting and um and get her uh make sure that she has her schedule open and i know she's a full-time student so she has other things that she's studying as well um but we want to uh we want to get her trained hopefully uh hopefully prior to december so she because that's really when we you know we start having discussions and certainly when the superintendent uh rolls the budget out in the beginning of January that the student needs to be trained by then. And will there be like a, a an official certificate so that we'll know that she's gone through the training? Um, we hadn't we hadn't gotten that far into it. Um, you know, we certainly can, you know, we can do some kind of a certification that she has been trained. That's certainly not a, a, a problem to do that. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but we I mean, as board members, we have to go through all those trainings online. Um, and so it just kind of just as to put on her files like like we have on our file all the trainings that we've been through it would be good for her even in when she go for um you know applying for colleges and, and for her future as well and his yep. or whoever it would be a good thing to have on her resume yep and since this is uh, uh you know mandated by the state legislature we probably should have something in writing that she did it okay great any other questions I have a question. So, um, were was the former uh, student board member or any teachers involved in developing this training? We did, uh, Mr. Tantliff. You can uh, um, jump in here, but I think we did reach out to our curriculum uh, folks in trying to develop the curriculum, and their take was most of what they have is for like personal financial training and that type of thing, less about a budget, uh, a budget of our size. And, and they really were saying what we had, what the ideas that we had and where we were going was, it was what they kind of supported. So I don't know, wait, am I, am I saying anything wrong there? Kind of jump in and tell, tell me, because you, you had those conversations. Yeah. No, um, that's exactly right, Chris. There, there was really no uh, relevant feedback that uh, any of the teaching staff would have. They don't ever work on budgetary matters at this level. 
any training, as Mr. Harlow mentioned, is more on the personal finance aspect. So uh, we talked to Ms. Shea and she couldn't think of anyone uh, else in the system that would be able to, you know, contribute to uh, this type of material. So none of the business magnet teachers where they're, um, you know, teaching about finance beyond personal finance, like finances for a business, because my my concern, I just want to ensure that this adher adheres to effective practices for a student um, and ensure that it's at the, the right level and that the words that are being used and that the way it's being delivered is in a manner that's appropriate for um, a student. So like when I look at something like, OK, um, I was looking at slide five, for instance, and um, and it talks about maintenance of effort. And so just to tell someone, even someone, on the, you know, just regular who has never really been involved in a budget like this, you have to unpack. Well, what is maintenance of effort? Because just to use that term without giving that background, um, it could be it's difficult to me, not just for um, a student to understand, but just anybody who's not familiar with dealing with a budget of this size. And so just as I go through, I'm just looking at, you know, is everything on here? Is there certain things that need to be unpacked a little bit more? And then how do we know that um, the information has actually been received? So are we, is the training just being delivered and then that's it? Is there some type of pre-post assessment to show that, um, that knowledge has been acquired? Um, and so I'm just, uh, you know, yeah, we could, we could, she could sit through it and it's okay, we, you do it. Um, or is there follow up? You know, this is a lot. And so just to get a one and done of a budget that meets the, the law, but is that meeting the need of our students? So that's all that I'm um, wondering and just, um, you know, when I look at like enterprise fund, like what is that? How do you so just unpacking some of these a little bit more so that there's a, a deeper understanding? That's that's good feedback. And I think what we can do with the feedback is, is we can do a few things. First of all, we can we can link we can loop in now that we have something that's they can look at. Maybe we can loop in some of our educational uh, folks to make making sure the level it's leveled properly. That's one thing we can do. We certainly can look at some kind of a definitions uh, section just to, you know, because uh, I think that would be. Um, um, and then we can also maybe look at some kind of a, a pre and post uh, assessment, you know, and see if that's a, a, a possibility as well and get some help from our instructional folks on that, you know, as well to see what would be a good good way to do that. Um, um, so that's all good feedback. And it may even be helpful just to reach out to the former student board member to find out like what is it that what did she want to know coming into this? What did she wish right. she would have known before, you know, like being on the budget committee and having to uh, I know she didn't get a chance to vote on the budget, but she was on the budget committee. And so what would she have liked to know? And that may be also right. helpful to. Uh, to go over with and then just making sure like all the acronyms are um, defined like what's a cola right. um, little things like that that I think could just better help um, her just not just her I mean this is something that could potentially be posted and shared with other student board members uh, across the state this could be a model I think um, so just making sure it's just when when our student member leaves there's some understanding and there's enough resources where she can go back and if she needs to um, reference anything, it's there. Got and it. it may be helpful, I think, for all the board members to go through this training because I don't know if anyone has had tra um, yep. training on budgets this size and dealing with this. So this may be worth putting in a webinar or something and letting board members view at um, their own leisure. Yeah, we talked it. We did talk talk about that as a possibility because it's, you know, these these folks are very similar to board members coming in. Uh, some board members, their expertise is in different. Every board member, their expertise is in different areas. Some are going to be, you know, full out, you know, numbers people, and others are going to be. They're going to come from a different perspective, and the budget may be kind of um, not their thing, not not their uh, expertise. And maybe not like an official pre and post test. I don't want to give her another test to take, but maybe <laughs> there's just some understanding checks built in along the way right. um, so that as you're going through this, there's a pause and you can, right. um, you know, see if it was received. 
Yeah, I was thinking that too, because if you have a test and then she never can pass, not not against our current, per, but we get a student, you know, what, you know, that can't pass the test, then what do we do? <laughs> yeah, so just building like a test, like an assessment where you can get it wrong and then go back, review, answer it again, right. and then just like we get. Right. So just so no, a, a I, understanding. Make sure I want to make sure I correct myself. When I see most of these students, I'm like, these are smart kids. They're smarter than I am, so I don't have any doubt that it, I don't want anybody thinking I think these I think these kids are pretty bright. Uh, you know, something uh, I would just add also is. This like uh, if you get really granular and you think about what does a fiscal assistant do to, you know, submit a purchase order or something, that's not at all what the student members going to do, we're kind of just trying to describe the process. And when they get and, and we have votes, it's sort of hard to really prepare for that other than being there, hearing the issues, understanding it and then voting on it. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind because it's not a hands on thing where they need to repeat something or do a task. We're just trying to give them a little uh, background on how uh, the budget is developed. And the truth is. Um, they're going to hear amendments, they're going to hear descriptions and it's you know, you're going to just take it in right there and and you know, give your best. Uh, you know, do your best at amending, voting up or down, et cetera. That's it. Thank you very much for that presentation. Next, we have Mr. Hartlove and Mr. Tantleff again will provide an update on ESSER funds. And uh, this one, I'll uh, introduce Mr. Tantliff again. He um, um, put this schedule together. And the one thing I will say about the schedule is it is the when uh, the superintendent has been talking about the budget, she's been referencing uh, the, the the total, the 80 million at the bottom. So this is this is what she's um, referencing. Um, and with that, uh, I will turn it over to Mr. Tantliff. Thanks. Um, so something to keep in mind, this is not obviously everything on ESSER. These are items on ESSER that at first blush. We would want to continue. Um, but there's a lot of work that's been done and will be done uh, to scrutinize these different initiatives from the chiefs, from the superintendent, from our office to see uh, how the cost could be reduced. There might be something uh, that was budgeted in ESSER and it doesn't need to be done that way. Or maybe when push comes uh, to shove, it's just not um, critical enough to rise to the top of the pack. But this is our starting point uh, just to kind of get you grounded. So these are the items for the most part that are in ESSER that in the normal course of things, if we didn't have uh, funding constraints, they would all uh, continue at least their concepts. I mean, if we still wanted to, but. Uh, so the first thing is the IEP chairs in the elementary school. <clears throat> then we have VLP. Um, then uh, we had added 131 paras to help with the extended instructional day. Uh, then the next item for 33 million is uh, the cost for uh, for Tabco, ESPBC, and Case. When we extended the day by 15 minutes, that was close for at least Tabco and ESPBC. That was a little under a 4% raise. Um, so we'll need to fund that 4% this year new before we get to any uh, compensation for FY25. That's uh, anything more than they're getting. 
Uh, this money is indeed already in the case and TABCO salary schedules. It's not broken out or differentiated in any way. It is just part of the schedule. Uh, next, we have 18 counselors and a health supervisor. Um, line 13 is the contractual safety assistance. Uh, line 15 was six magnet positions we picked up when <clears throat> a magnet grant went away a couple years ago. So this was kind of a temporary way uh, to keep those positions going. Uh, we added, um, I think you'll all recall, uh, $4 onto our sub pay and onto our contractual pay. That's like additional assistance, kindergarten assistance, et cetera. Um, you can see that's almost 11 million just in salaries before uh, fringe benefits of FICA and workers comp are added on. So it's quite extensive. Blueprint mandated that we convert the pre-K assistance to paraeducators. So uh, we did that for 104 positions this year. The CE funded 41 of them. So 41 of them are in the general fund. There's 63 existing that will need to be picked up in the general fund next year. And then we're going to have uh, requests on top of that because we're uh, trying to expand full day pre-K as rapidly as we can find space. And that's one of the primary mandates of the blueprint legislation. And it's also a priority, I think, for uh, certainly the superintendent and the CE. And then line 24, we just have the benefits and state retirement uh, that's associated uh, with all of these initiatives. But of course, that needs to get picked up also when uh, everything comes over. So our starting point again, this probably will not be what you see in the superintendent's presentation, but the starting point was 281 and a half FTEs and just about $82 million. That's it in a nutshell, and we'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you for that. Um, this is really, really important um, information, and I'm hoping that this is being brought to the forefront for the superintendent and the budget process, because these are the things, you know, last paid for first cut when it comes to that fiscal clip. And I want to make sure that we're not cutting something that our our students and our teachers and our schools need. Mm -hmm. um, so it, we really need to understand what needs to stay and what needs to go. And if it can be weighted as far as if we can get some outcomes, some matrix, some, you know, we need the data that says this is working so that we can keep this stuff and we can fight for it and, and get it in our budget because this money is, is gone and we've got to figure out how to fund it if this is something that we need to continue. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Yes, I have Go ahead. around the extended day. So that is our largest um, budget item in this spreadsheet. And what, and it's my understanding, and I don't know if this is the right, I don't know if we should have this conversation in the budget committee or at a board meeting, but Baltimore County added 15 minutes to the instructional day using ESSER funds. That 15 minutes, as I understand it, was broken up. It wasn't like a 15 solid minute was added on to like math or ELA. It was broken up two minutes here, seven minutes here. And so it really didn't align with research-based practices for extending a school day. And I don't know if we've seen that return on investment for the, you know, the $33 million above that we'll need to get for, for 15 minutes of extended instruction and so um so that is my biggest concern with this budget item is that number one we're not aligned to research-based practices with adding that 15 minutes um, to the day but then <clears throat> 15 minutes up into these smaller pieces um where it's really not a significant amount of time in the areas that's where it's really needed in math and ela and then my other concern is um you know, are we seeing that return on investment? This 15 minutes a day, that's been in effect for 
what, at least a year or two, and our, we still this haven't had seen realized gains um, for having that additional 15 minutes. So I'm all for extending the school day. I'm all for extending the school calendar, but I'm for, for I'm in alignment with, I'm, I want to do that in alignment with research-based practices with what we know works and not just simply tacking on 15 minutes and then dividing that across, you know, four class periods or seven or however the day is structured. Um, and so that would be the line item in the budget that I would really want to unpack because if we're still doing 15 minutes a day, the way that we're currently doing, I don't know if we can justify that expense because we're not seeing that return on investment. But if we're going to reimagine that 15 minute um, day, or if we're going to add enough time so that it truly aligns with research based practices, um, then I would be all for that. But I'm not that extended instructional day. We would definitely need more data um, and what we're going to how we're going to reimagine that so that we're truly um, aligned to the research and getting the most return on investment. Uh, Mr. Cantliff, let me let me take the first stab at this one and then you can sure. jump in. The, OK, so the, here's the, 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 the and I hear everything you're saying. I think it's 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 they're very, very good points. Um, I think. The 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 first thing we have to remember is this 15 minutes then went into our teacher salaries. So it's embedded in their salary. So if we were to say we're going to take this back, then their salaries would would go down. So that's the first thing. So so uh, so I think taking it out becomes problematic, but how it's used is certainly open for for that is fair to me is fair game. I, you know, I think it I think it will one way or the other will probably stay in because I think if we tried to take it out, then the, the union would probably want to add it back as a salary increase, you know, some kind of a salary increase. So we'd be paying it one way or the other. I think again, that's you know speaking a little bit out of out of turn there, but you know, um, but I do think how we utilize it is definitely a, 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 a good conversation to have, and and um, and I think we've had some of those conversations internally. We've we we we've, we've talked about that. Um, I also believe. As far as and that, this doesn't really answer your question, but another reason I think we did it is because I think our stay is shorter was short was one of the shortest in the state. So I think this brings us into the ballpark of where everybody else is. I don't have those numbers in front of me, um, but yes, I think it's a valid point. You know, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, and uh, we should be trying. If we're going to spend this kind of money, uh, we should be trying to. Um, Make sure that we're getting uh, students are getting something for it. So I think that's that's a very good point. Yeah, because it's not an extended instructional day. It's a normal instructional day. Right. Um, like as you said, that that was really the whole premise of Baltimore County adding the 15 minutes. I, I just remember because I was at the State Department of Education when this plan came through and I had to read it and there was a lot of back and forth with this 15 minutes isn't aligned to research based practices. And if you're doing this just to get to the normal school day, then let's just call it that and let's not make it seem like we're we're doing something that's really um, extending the school day because it's not. So, you, you know, you keep the teacher's salary, the, you know, you keep you don't take it out of their salaries, but you call it what it is and that we're aligning the school day with right. what's expected statewide. And if we're going to truly extend the instructional day, then that's a whole different discussion. But um, but that just it, it always bothered me that 15 yep. minutes and then us calling it an extended instructional day um, that just it never sat well with me. Yeah, and I think yeah maybe that's it's uh, it, it it's we just clean up what we call it first of all. But it's still a valid point in that the 15 minutes if you know which we should make sure that we're trying to utilize it to the benefit of students. So I think it's a good point. And wait, I don't know if there was anything you wanted to add on that. I you know if you do sure. jump in. Uh, just I guess a couple things to keep in mind. Teacher salaries have to get to 60,000. So even if we had never done this during ESSER, we would be doing it just to increase teacher salaries this year. We would still need to get that. It's about a little under 4% of their salaries anyway. Um, uh, as Mr. Hartlove mentioned, we did have the shortest school day in the year, so the school day got 15 minutes longer, so that kept us out of hot water. 
where we were not hitting, we were hitting the mandated days, but not that we weren't always hitting the mandated uh, hours of teaching. And so it took care of that. And the other thing I'd mention is, uh, although the 15, the school is 15 day minutes longer, teachers, it manifested itself for TABCO uh, as 15 more minutes of planning time in their day. So TABCO got 15 additional minutes of uh, planning time, but your your points were excellent. 15 minutes, you know, let's just be practical. Uh, you know, how it's not focused or concentrated in a way that would, you know, if you just did 30 more minutes a day of math or something, then you could, I think, get to what you're saying, but 15 minutes spread out, um, you know, it, it, I think it'll be hard for anyone to prove that that 15 minutes <laughs> directly tied to student achievement. And um, and I know we're looking to, to save money, but what we're hearing from the community is that the safety assistants are just so valuable in the schools. And if there's any way to increase that, and I know we're not, we're, we're facing cuts, and, but I mean, I, I definitely think just from what we're hearing and that anecdotal information that we're hearing, I mean, I don't know if there's been like an official evaluation of it, but you know, to double down on that and to get more of those safety assistance, it would be huge, I think, in the schools. And um, and so that's just my my two cents, but I want to keep everything going. I don't, I really don't want to cut anything and I want to add more to whatever we can. So, um, However, we can get more money. I'm all for it. And I think we in our preliminary discussions with the superintendent, she has that's that's one I think she feels very strongly about as well. This, you know, so I, I think you're going to see that in her in her budget. Um, some of these, the other thing we're trying to look at is, is some of these some of these items and I'm not, you know, with the as, as Mr. Tantler said, they're pretty summarized, but I think some of it also did really tie to the pandemic and, you know, so, so some of these we we probably will be easier to take out than others. Others are are kind of core things now that we need to continue. And I think the security, uh, I think the safety assistance are one of those. I yes. just want to go Great. back to the the fifteen extra minutes really quickly because I I don't want to take that away. I think that's really important. Um, but I would like to know how we because it's 15 minutes extra day for an elementary school student a middle school student and a, and a high school student is very different and i wouldn't i would like the 15 i mean just kind of putting it out there like an elementary school student would need 15 more minutes of outside or activity or gym or just running around and getting the energy out or an early 15 minute start for a high school or middle school to do the same thing so it's not necessarily and it's kind of concerning that um we're worried that teachers are going to about their um, that their salaries are going to be cut because we're going to take that 15 minutes away when it's really about the students and that we gave them that 15 minutes because we needed better outcomes. And so we need to figure out if that and it, the 15 minutes, it, like Ms. Booker Dwyer said, it's really just getting us up to a full school day and giving the, our students the same as everyone across the state. And we need to get on the same pages with that and give our kids the best education we can. So I, I don't want to touch that. Like I, I, they need them. I mean, whether it, and it's, but it's different. I and mean, we need to understand, we need to know how that 15 minutes is being used across the board because it's, it's going to be different for elementary, middle and high school student. And I would like to know how that's being utilized. And if we are spending it wisely, which I hope we are, um, we need to see that this see you know, that broken down a little bit further. That's that's all I I don't know if we can get that, but that's that's what I would like to see. Would it be better if we called it and I know this is just, you know, but if we called it uh, 15 minutes. Um, additional 15 minutes added to standard day, you know, because that's what it, it's not really extending because you know, I think your point is well taken. It's not really saying, OK, we had a full day and now we're going to give kids some extra on top of that full day. We weren't meeting kind of the minimum. So we were trying to we we're really trying to get to the standard day, not to an extended day. And that's what this was all about, just getting us to a standard day. So maybe if yeah. we use that standard as opposed to extended.
Uh, yeah, I think with moving forward, because, you know, this is ESSER language, and once right. that's all done, then we could revisit the language. Um, and just to be clear, I'm not an advocate for cutting any teacher salaries. Right. I want right. to get started with emails. Right. Like, and I, and I, and I'm not either. I was just saying, yeah. like, it's concerning that, like, I wouldn't want to cut their salary either, but I don't want to cut the time. So it's, you know. Yeah, yeah no, I don't want to cut the time either, because yeah. it's just a standard school day now. Yeah. Um, but extended, you know, extending the day, extending the school year is something that we're going to need to do and to find money for to um, to get our academic achievement where it needs to be. But a real extended instructional day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. McMillian. First of all, can you hear me? Because I was muted. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. OK. I just went, and I don't mean to hijack this topic and, and go off course, but I just want to throw out, you want to look at some academic research. Let's look at the four period day versus the seventh period day and how many, that that's that's where it is. And and to get your bang for your buck, is the four period day really doing what, you know, people say it does. And and years ago, 25 plus years ago, when, when, when a uh, four period day came into a high school setting, People argued that that it was all about saving time and minutes, you know, back on the teachers, that they could get more out of a teacher with with three uh, 90 minute periods versus the traditional seven. So that that's the place I think to look at for academic performance. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. I think. I should we move on? Are we good here? Anybody else have any more follow up or comments or questions on this one? All right. OK, so Mr. Ta Mr. Hartlove, please share your announcement on edgenomics. Um, sure. I just wanted to let you know, um, uh, uh, Ms. Dominowski shared uh, with us a uh, some presentations from uh, uh, Edgenomics, uh, and um, I looked through all of them. They very there's some really good ideas in there, some very helpful um, um, items. Um, so I really just wanted to say I appreciate it, and uh, we 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 appreciate the resources, um, and we and we are uh, reviewing them. Thank you. Yeah, I, there was a lot in there. Um, I'm still going through it myself and I I wanted to make sure that you guys had it. There were a lot of really good resources that you don't even, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's there for you to put the numbers in and to look it up. And so um, if anybody had any other questions about that or wanted any information, um, there's a lot of there's a lot there. Yeah, right. so that was just a that was just a thank you and a, and that was all I wanted to say there. Well, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, the last item is our announcements, which is our next budget meeting is scheduled for November fifteenth. Um, unless we have any further business, anyone have any thing they want to add? Sorry, I'm going back and forth right now. Before I say goodnight, are we good? Everybody good? All right, have a great night, everybody. We finished before seven. See you next thank time. You. Take Good care. Night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.